welcome everybody to our discussion with the um, top two candidates that emerged from the August primary in the four-person Sanford mayoral race. Um, incumbent Mayor Art Woodruff, who is a teacher, who was appointed mayor in 2020 and throughout the years has served um, four terms on the city commission and, and set out one. Um, and um, Mr. Charles Davis, who owns um, a nationwide insurance agency and operates a flight school and has been chairman of the Sanford Downtown Redevelopment District since 2013 and a member of the board since 2008. Um, we're going to spend about 30 minutes um, talking about some of the issues in Sanford. And then at the end of the at the end of the, our time, we're going to give both candidates a chance to make a closing statement. Um, and so I'm going to dive right in and just ask both of you, what made you decide um, that you, right at this time in history, wanted to be mayor of Sanford? And obviously, you know, one of you already is. So let's let's start with the, our our challenger, Mr. Davis. Okay. Thank you for having us and thank you for doing this. This is very nice. Um, <clears throat> I've been in Sanford my entire life um, and I have, I've served on many boards. Not only have I served on the uh, Community Development Agency, I've also served on the Central Florida Zoo Board. I currently serve as chairman for the Seminole County Sheriff's Community Foundation. Um, I've been involved in Sanford, uh, really started getting really involved in about 2001 and when I joined the Sanford Chamber of which I, I served two years as chair and was in that on that board for um, close to uh, 12 years. Um, I feel that just right now uh, Sanford is in a transition. I, I think we have a lot of growth going on. I believe that um, you know there are a lot of things that are changing. The, the dynamics of Sanford are changing. The the way that um, some of the older structures are changing. Um, we need to look at redeveloping those. And I just felt at this time, it was just time for me to step up and bring my style of leadership to the city of Sanford. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Woodruff? Okay. Um, again, thank you for having us. Uh, I appreciate that the Sentinel goes to, to the trouble of doing this to inform our voters. I think it's very important. Um, you know, as you mentioned, I was on the city commission uh, for a total of four terms. I represented District 1 and hadn't really planned on becoming mayor. But when Mayor Triplett resigned, the city commission thought I was the best one to step in and take that, that place for the last two years. Um, I've got a lot of knowledge, a lot of understanding of how the city works. We are doing really well. No one will deny that things are going very well in Sanford. We do have some challenges. Um, there's some things I think we still need to take care of, and I'm in that position to do that, to bring the people together and, and work through the issues we have to continue to improve Sanford. Thank you very much. Um, one of the things that Sanford has is one of the longest serving city managers in Central Florida. Um, Mr. Bonaparte, um, has been city manager, I believe, since 2011. What's your take on his performance? Um, what priorities should the commission and mayor be setting for him in the coming in the coming years? Okay. And we'll start with um, Mayor Woodruff. Okay, um, I work very well with Norton. I think he does a good job. Um, I know he gets some complaints from the rest of the commission because he plays things very close to the chest sometimes. Uh, I actually appreciate that about that, that position. Uh, back in the early 2000s in my, my, my first term on the commission, the mayor wanted to change us to a strong mayor form of government. And I joined the, the group that opposed that. Um, I, I think it's very important that we have a professional city manager that takes the um, direction of the city commission in terms of policy, but that enacts that policy and does it in a fair and professional way. I think he's done a good job for the city. I think he continues to good, do a good job. I had a conversation with him uh, just this week about, you know, have we slowed down? Have are, are things not going as well? And I think it's uh, my take on that conversation was we have a lot of things that are lined up and ready to go. We're sort of in a lull of big things happening right now, but we have a lot coming and a lot of things being put in place. 
All right, Mr. David. <clears throat> Mr. Bonaparte, I think, uh, represents the city very well. Um, he does keep things close to his chest. Um, from a from a businessman standpoint, um, sometimes I wish he would be a little more um, out in the decision making. But uh, um, obviously, as a CRA chairman, I don't really work side by side with Mr. Bonaparte as the, as the current mayor would. Um, but I will I will definitely say that when it comes to representing the city, I, I think Norton does a phenomenal job at that. He's very professional. Um, I did the only. Not that it's a complaint, but the only thing I would say is that um, I wish he was more hands-on for me personally. Um, I don't. I think that a leader needs to be a leader, and and sometimes that means coming out of your office and and getting involved not only with staff but with um, and, and other decisions. And and I don't I don't see a lot of that. But once again, to be fair to Mr. Bonaparte, I'm not in a position that that would be something you know that I would be regularly doing. It's just something that I've noticed. One of the things that I, I'm looking at the coverage, have noticed is that um, the situation with um, the current direction of downtown um, has has got some some a bit of division among some people who think downtown is just much too busy for a city like Sanford, and some people who regard the entertainment district there as one of the city's signal accomplishments. Where do you, where, what, what is your impression of the city's downtown right now? And um, what, what changes, if any, do you think the city should be making? Who do you want to go first? Um, well, let's um, start with, with Mayor Woodruff. Okay. Um, you know, I think we're, we're feeling some growing pains, obviously. The, things have gone very well the events have brought a lot of people down there uh, we have a lot of bars and restaurants and and other venues that have opened up and we're seeing you know a lot of people from outside of the city that are coming to sanford uh, when we first created the what we call the entertainment district along sanford avenue i raised the the issue that uh, we might have some problems later on with it being so close to our residential district and that's some of what's happened uh, we're we're working through that. We've actually tweaked the noise ordinance twice. Uh, we're working with our code enforcement and our um, police departments and with the business owners to, to make sure everyone understands the expectation. And you, we, we continue to, on some nights, have some issues, but things have been improving, I think, and from, from talking to the people on both sides that we are getting where we need to be. Uh, it's going to be interesting, I think, as we bring more residents down there. We've got one apartment complex on Sanford Avenue. It's 10 apartments. We have another one planned um, there at Palmetto uh, and 2nd Street. We have uh, townhouses going in on 1st Street, and we have the Heritage Park Project, which will bring a lot of um, residents downtown. And we want that. Uh, I think that will also cause a challenge, though, as we as we try to accommodate both our visitors, visitors, our businesses, and our residents. And we'll continue to work on that. Okay, Mr. Lewis. You know, as being a chairman of the CRA, um, couldn't be more proud of what our downtown has turned out to be. It is exactly what um, we've been working towards for, for many of years. I do agree with the current mayor that, um, you know, the Sanford Avenue, that was just added into the CRA probably 10 years ago. That was never part of the CRA, but um, a previous uh, chairman, Maria Shreve, thought that would be the next entertainment district and worked out a, a way to, to trade out some houses that were in the CRA district for that four block piece. Um, and, and really we built it and they came. Um, you know, when you look at what downtown Sanford has turned into, um, it's it's phenomenal. I, I do feel that there is a, a a fine line between entertainment and then people experiencing noise. And I do think that somebody sitting in their house should be able to sit in their house peacefully. Um, and, and that is something that is being addressed and has been addressed. But I also feel that, um, you know, as as we build within downtown, you know, one of the things that I was I was impressed with is when they built the apartment complex at the corner of Sanford Avenue and Second Street. Um, the developer, without the city asking to do it, the developer 
put in extra insulation, put in thicker windows, did all this on his dime because he knew that his residents would probably be complaining about noise. Now, I don't know how much that's going to change of it, but you would have to think that it would help. And I think as moving forward, um, as, as the mayor alluded to, we have 31 townhomes going up um, that are being built right now. We have the uh, apartment complex that I was just talking about and the one on Palmetto. And, and the developers should be working to make sure that what they're doing in there is maybe spending a little extra money to soundproof it, which is easy to do. Um, you know, as far as, as growth going, um, you know, one of the things that most people forget to mention is that, you know, we have the SunRail station, which is right outside of our town. Uh, most of the other towns have a SunRail station that stops in their downtown. We didn't have that in our downtown. It's probably, I think it's two and a half miles away from our downtown. You know, the CRA put together, funded a trolley, and, and we have now almost 70,000 people that ride the trolley and the Amtrak yearly. And actually, the number one destination that people come from is the Sand Lake um, stop, which is phenomenal for Sanford because that means they're passing Winter Park to come to Sanford and they're making it a destination and people are calling ahead to the city to schedule to schedule rides and they're bringing groups of 10 and 15 people. So as far as the downtown growth goes, um, I think where we are with it right now is what the plan was the whole time. And now we just need to make sure that as we grow, we are thinking about not only businesses, but residents. And that plays right into my next question, which is that like most Central Florida cities, Sanford is struggling with a lack of affordable housing, not mm -hmm. just for low income workers, but for um, uh, teachers, police officers, middle income people. What do you think the city needs to do more of to improve affordability and accessibility of homes inside Sanford? And we'll start with Mr. Davis. Um, you know, one thing that drives the the house rate and the apartment rates is being a destination. Um, Central Florida is definitely a destination. Central Florida is definitely a place people are moving to. I think I saw the numbers, a thousand people a day are moving into Florida. Um, you know, there's a fine line between the city getting involved in the private sector. Um, but I do also feel that we do need to have affordable housing. Uh, affordable housing, you know, if you look at the projects that are within the Goldsboro neighborhood, there are, there are apartments that are set to be built that are going to be affordable housing. There's a, an apartment, uh, a section that was built off of 2nd Street. I'm, I, I want to say Pine, but I'm not positive it's Pine, but it's in that area. And, and these places they're building do not look like affordable housing. They look like any other place that you would build. I think we need to find pockets that will fit that need and then um, work with the developers and other people to put the affordable housing in there. But I don't feel that the city needs to get involved in, in, in what they're trying to do in Orlando, where they're doing rent caps or something along those lines. I just don't think that's the place for the city to get involved in the private sector. Okay. And Thank you, Mayor Woodruff. Yeah, there's, there's not a lot the city can directly do. Um, we had the the housing authority, which had uh, several hundred units that had to be torn down um, because they, they were dilapidated. We're, we're slowly rebuilding some of those uh, and working with the, uh, the housing authority to get that done. Uh, they are dependent on financing mainly through the state, through the Sadowski Fund. And so we, we work with our state legislature to try to fully fund that because that's where the, the bulk of the money can come from to help us get more affordable housing. We've talked about the possibility of um, incentivizing developers to do some a certain percentage of affordable units, and, and we haven't found a, a good way to do that yet. Uh, one of the things we're talking about now is at least requiring um, a 60-day minimum in, in raising rents. And I, I was talking to an apartment developer and, and manager, um, you know, about how rents are set and rents are set. I didn't realize this. They're set day by day. When somebody comes in, that's, you know, they look on the, the computer to figure out what the rent is and it can change from one day to the next. And so putting that, you know, that in um, was a, a tenant's bill of rights type of thing um, might help a little bit. At least it gives people some time. You know, we work with Habitat for Humanity. We've, when we have property available, we will donate it to them to build housing, and we work with them as much as possible. They'll be building, I think, 18 homes in um, Sanford this year. Uh, and you know, we work with a couple others. We've got, um, you know, 
home for good uh, organization, basically it's one person who put their their retirement savings into building some affordable housing. So, you know, we look for partners like that to to try to to build um, build up affordable housing, but it's it's so market driven, it's very difficult without without funding from outside of the city to to really have an impact. Thank you. Um, one area where the, the two of you seem to have some some disagreement is the city's approach to homelessness inside um, city limits. What is, if you could both just give me a brief description of what you think the city should be doing or, or not be doing to address homelessness in Sanford, if anything, more than what they're doing now. And um, let's start with the mayor. Okay. Um, you know, we worked through the, um, homeless co coalition from the central florida homeless coalition um to to provide service there's a great service to john sanford i think years ago the city sort of made a mistake we we focused so much on why are they bringing those type of services to sanford they should put those services somewhere else we don't need every agency to come to sanford um and i think that was a mistake because because now we're recognizing um, that we need those services. I've been talking to the sharing center, which started in Sanford and moved to Longwood. And um, we've been talking to them about possibility. I would really like to get um, a facility like they have in the Oasis, which is a, a day center and a, a resource center and where they provide um, case management. They require case management of um, the people that come in. I would really like to get something like that in Sanford. Um, Today is. I don't know that the mayor and I are on the opposite ends of homelessness. Um, homelessness is, is has a, different, a bunch of different factors. One of them, obviously, being mental health, is why are they choosing to be be homeless? Um, the other is that you know Sanford also has the only um, out shelter, which is a rescue yeah. outreach mission, which is on in Goldsboro that that houses. I think they are allowed to house. Um, Close to 60 people, I believe, when they're full capacity. Um, I've supported that 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 um, program for many of years and, um, and and helped out a little bit with that. Um, you know, the sharing center, which is phenomenal. Um, as as chairman for the sheriff or the Similar County Sheriff's Community Foundation, we also have a fund which we call the Daily Difference. And and what that fund is is we've uh, put into that program, which is $10,000, so that deputy sheriffs, when they're out, if they see somebody sleeping in their car, they see somebody that has a need that they can immediately spend up to $250 to take care of that family. Um, and, I, and I'm, I'm proud to say that there's been many a times that they've had families that they've put into hotel rooms or something like that. I think there's a, a lot of different types of homelessness. There's people that have a mental illness. There's people that have lost a job and can't, can't, can't afford to stay in a place. And, and people that have lost their job or rent has gotten too hard, we need to have programs available for them. So I, I, I fully believe that it is something that needs to be looked at. Um, you know, Sanford did have a lot of programs that happened within Sanford, but they still do. Um, there's there's a church on Second Street that does a daily or every Tuesday. They're giving out free food. There's a lot of programs that happen within Sanford, and I think those programs need to continue happening. And um, now, as far as the city, you know, what can the city be doing on that? I think the city just needs to make sure they get behind these nonprofit pro, uh, organizations and and give them the support they need to continue what they're doing. Uh, and and I think that Sanford has done very well at doing that over the years. The next question I had is, um, one of the one of the um, challenges in growing tax base is that um, at times it does require um, considering adding more area to the city. Sanford has very little, if any. Um, land inside city limits on the west side of I-4. Do you believe that is a hard barrier that should remain or is it something that the city should eventually look at and exiting toward Astor and, and other areas like that? Um, and let's start with Mr. Davis. You know, there's an agreement, uh, and I'm not sure what the exact agreement is, but there's an agreement that, that you would not annex past I-4. Um, Quite honestly, um, I don't agree with that agreement. Uh, I think that if they're getting city services or if um, you know they already have a Sanford address, I think they should be annexed into the city. There's only a couple of ways that you change the Avalon tax. You either get more commercial, more retail, more industrial, or you add more homes. 
And, and quite honestly, you need to have a good balance with that. But um, I've, I've many a times have thought, how do we get ourselves into that? Was not part of it during the time frame, so I can't say it's, it was a good idea for the time or a bad idea for the time. I can just tell you for today's times, I think it's something we should probably take a look at. Yeah, I think that agreement goes back to like the 1970s, um, and you know where we def- were defining where the the utility service area for the city would be. And essentially, this the utility service area defines where we can can annex. Um, at this point, in terms of being able to cross I-4, um, it's already so developed there, there you know, we would not be able to get them to annex. There's no, there's no reason for them to annex. The, the county has allowed municipal development in, in a lot of areas. And you know, to, go, to go across there, and so like, you know, why would the people in Lake Forest, why would they um, now want to annex into the city? And also, why would we want to annex them? because we would lose out on all of the impact fees. We wouldn't receive any impact fees from that, but we would suddenly be required to provide the police and fire service for them. So it's, you know, once things are developed, it's really not a good deal. We have the same issue on the east side of town along Celery Avenue, where um, you know, we made a, an agreement with, with the county and you know, looking back, it was, a bad, it was a bad agreement. At the time it made sense, we didn't have the staff we thought they were all coming in at one time to do the development and we weren't going to have the staff to be able to review the plans. Um, also, we were trying, we didn't want to surround Midway with the city of Sanford. And, um, you know, that has not worked out. But at this point to annex those and we have annexation agreements with all of those developments along there. But to annex them, we would suddenly have to provide services, but we would not get the impact fees that we would need to buy the police cars, the fire engines and things like that. Um, you know, where we have room to, to grow is along Lake Mary Boulevard. Uh, the county worked with the city to do a small area study there this last year where you know, we've had comprehensive planning along there, but we, we didn't have a good vision of exactly what should go where. And so we, we've worked with the stakeholders out there. We worked with economic development with the airport and sort of drew a line in the sand. Here's the end of residential development. The rest of this should be con- commercial and industrial development. Uh, we also have the area um, near I-4, the um, North White Cedar and Narcissus area, where there's still room for development there and, um, and a lot of commercial development. One of the things that, that I'm looking at is a lot of our comp plan areas call for mixed use, but they aren't very clear as to how that happens. And so right now we've had a, a lot of apartment development over on the west side of town which is shifting the percentage of residential and uh, commercial. And so we need to look at how, how we get back to making sure we have the mix that we, we need. Um, Thank you. Can I, can I have a minute on Because I really stuck to the question that was asked being on well, I-4. Why don't you add that? East side of town. Um, I, I would like to just touch off on the east side of town. You know, mm-hmm. the mayor did allude to the fact that it was a mistake because they didn't think they had the staff. In business, when you have the ability to make money and bring money into the organization, that's when you add staff to do that. You know, we're offering services out there on the east side of town, celery that they're talking about, um, and we did not get any of the impact fees. We're not getting any any of the abalorum tax, but yet we're going to be having to fix the infrastructure that's under there as it ages over the years. And and if you didn't, you know, once they build. You're 100 percent correct they're not going to annex into the city why would they they get higher taxes and and that's it so it should have been done back in in 08 when it was done and it should have been with the idea that these projects didn't start being built until 2017 2018 you had plenty of time to ramp up and bring on employees to cover that i i think that was a huge mistake to to not bring those tax dollars in when you're offering services yes you're getting the the uh, bills for the water and the utilities but a lot of times when you listen to the utilities department talk that is to cover the services and to pay for what they're having and then some of the money does go into the coffer but it would have been great to have had you know the abalorum tax that you could be then setting aside or doing what you need to to fix the infrastructure so uh, and and then lake marine boulevard you know I, I was at a commission meeting not too long ago and and they brought up that um they were looking at doing the Lake Mary Boulevard development plan. And one of the commissioners said, Haven't we, aren't we already fixing the uh, fence after the horse is let out? And, and we did. And one of the comments from somebody on there was that we were supposed to have done this back in 2010, but we did not. 
and 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 now we're where we're at now and and that is the poor planning that it's easy to sit back down the road and go we should have done it but you didn't do it and that's the things that make sanford's tax base and everything grow to help cover some of the expenses such as fire police trucks and or excuse me fire trucks and police cars and stuff like that right and thank mayor, you thank you and mayor obviously we we want to get your response to that well one of the things is residential um ad valorem taxes do not pay for the cost of the services it takes to um to service them so um you know annexing where it's residential development single family residential would not pay for what it costs to service with police and fire even with the impact fees we would be able to buy the equipment but the long-term cost of um of providing those services you know, the, the the total ad valorem tax base does not cover the cost of police and fire so you know it's not like we would be making money by having annexed those areas um, and he's right. It, you know, it was some of that was back in 2010, which actually was the term I was not on in office. Thank you. Um, and actually, we we have covered so much ground. I really appreciate both of you mm -hmm. um, keeping your answers concise. I have one more question. Um, and, and we were we were headed right in this direction already. Um, the city's millage rate is higher than adjacent cities already. Um, what, if any thing, should the city do to shift its budget priorities or um, redefine its approach to um, budgeting and services? Um, it, is the millage rate appropriate for the size of Sanford and the services it provides? And um, let's start with the mayor. Okay. Um you know, when I first came into office, I think it was at 7.325. Over um, eight years, we we were able to whittle it down a little bit. Um, I think we got down to 6.5. Um, when 2008 happened, we had the double whammy of the um, recession and housing prices dropping as uh, homestead exemptions were added by um, the state. And so we the millage rate over um, several years came back up to 7.3 to 5. That's something that's bothered me because I've wanted to, to whittle that back down. But I went and, and really looked at what are our true taxes? What are we actually charging people? And in Seminole County, even though we have the highest tax rate because of our home value, our actual taxes are the third lowest in Seminole County. If you look at the actual amount being paid per, per home, if you look at the amount of taxes brought in per resident. If you look at the expenditures per resident, we are at the, we are in, at the, the low end. Um, so yeah, the, and, and I understand it, it's a problem, especially for businesses, which is one of the reasons I um, advocated for uh, um, tax rebate for, for new businesses come in and to, to incentivize them um, as we have um, more homes that are now coming in at higher value. We're act we're seeing some discrepancies, and we we do need to look at trying to lower that. But there's not a lot of places in the budget that we haven't already cut. We we're a pretty lean um, operation. We looked several years ago at turning our fire department over to the county, thinking you know will that save us money? Well, we operate our fire department at a lower cost than the county does, so it would have cost us more money to have the county take over our fire department. Um, right now, we're, we're, we're really looking at hard at salaries. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be advocating that we actually raise salaries more than, than is our um, staff has, has presented. And then we also have to look at our fire and police. Um, if we can't afford to, to keep the people on staff, um, you know, we have a serious problem. So, so at this point, you know, it's easy to say, oh, wow, it's the highest millage rate. But when you really look at the budget and you really understand it, um, the city's doing a good job. Thank you. And Mr. Davis. Um, yes, I would say the city's doing a good job. But I also feel that if you were going to um, look at the, the home medium, the best way to do it would have been, you know, getting the homes on Celery Avenue that are selling for three, four hundred fifty thousand dollars to come in to help raise that up. Um, a lot of the development that's happened within Lake Murray Boulevard and within Celery 
it's it's a and, and out on Myrtle is a mixture between city and, and Sanford and the city of Sanford and Seminole County. And when you're driving down through there, the way you tell which it is, you have to look at the street signs to see if they have a city logo or they have a county logo. And we and we do have a mixture within there. Um, you know, the, the best way to to be able to lower your taxes when the 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 low the house medium is lower is to, like I said earlier, is to bring in either more commercial, more retail, more industrial, and, and we do need to focus on that. There are there is some of that going in within Lake Mary Boulevard. Um, there is a, a nice mixture going in within there. Um, and there's another project that is, is slated to be there, but then it also comes down to the police and fire. Um, you know, right now our police department, is, the the officers that are within our police department are the least paid within the county. Um, the one that's the next one that's closest to it would be Winter Springs, and um, and it would be Winter Springs, and within Winter Springs. You know they move them up very quickly but at the end of the after they leave training they're making a thousand dollars more than the city of sanford um and and we're not being you know not being able to pay those wages we're not keeping officers here and we're not keep getting people vested within the city um he did mention looking at you know they did look at, at back at having the fire department be taken over to the county um you know right now there's an inter, inter county agreement where the fire departments both help each other out but I also feel that Sanford needs its identity of a fire department. And obviously, as the mayor said, it was cheap. We do it cheaper anyway. So, I mean, realistically, we need, we look, we need to look at bringing in more money that is not on the homeowners and is on the commercial side to help mm -hmm. offset that. And then you can roll back. And, and that's really what needs to happen. Um, so that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, we have come to you to our time and, and I really have enjoyed talking to you. Just to remind people, this is for the November 8th election. These two gentlemen are the top two vote getters um, from the primary. Everybody in the city can vote, obviously. It's a mayoral race. Um, so we would like to invite our candidates to make their, their pitch for in, in just a minute or two for why they are the right choice at this time for Sanford May. And we'll start with our challenger, Mr. Davis. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And once again, thank you for having us. This has really has been fun. We've been to quite a few other debates. I have to say, Art, this is probably the best one we've done yet. <laughs> um, but, you know, I feel that I'm, I'm a better candidate in the sense that I feel that the city has always been reactive. We're never proactive. Um, there are things like just recently um, the, the water bill increase and, and it's to help pay for the water meters, you know, if you get water in Sanford, you know your bill one month is 150 bucks and next month it might be $70. We've known since 2017 there's an issue with the water meters and we didn't really plan for it. Um, and we and we and it had we planned for it and put money aside and been a little more reactive, which you've had to actually raise the water bill to this point. Um, I think we have some key areas within the city that we need to start paying attention to, one of them being the mall. Uh, the one thing that has definitely come out of COVID is that the way people shop is different. And, and you've got a lot of square footage that is happening out at the mall that is becoming vacant. If you haven't been in the Central Town Center mall lately, there's nothing there. There's not even a Chick-fil-A there and the air conditioning doesn't work. So you're going to see a lot of square footage out there that is going to be coming vacant. And we need to be planning for that so that we don't end up with what happened on Longwood when all the uh, car dealerships pulled out. If you had blight and you had abandoned buildings that were sitting there not, not having anything in them, and, and then they started working on redevelopment. You know, Lake Mary Boulevard is another area. And then our airport, you know, we are the only city in Seminole County, obviously, that has an airport. A lot of passengers come through there. We have three airlines, we have three airlines flying out of there right now. Obviously, we used to have a lot more before COVID with the international flights. Hopefully, as, as time goes on, those flights will build back up. But right now, we do have a very nice regional and, and you know, uh, flights happening out of there. Um, but that area needs to be developed and, and we do need to develop that area. They are working at doing it. There are a lot of projects in the pipeline at looking at developing that area, but it's something that we need to be planning to make sure that the development that's happening out there complements the other areas around that area. Um, there's neighborhoods there that are really up in arms over the possibility of, of the runway being extended. Um, and so those are, those are the areas that I think we need to be focusing on and waiting until 10 years after the fact to say we should have done it back then is not what we should be doing now. We need to start planning for now for the 10 years from now. And, and that's where I think we lack. And that's what I think I bring to the table. So once again, thank you for having us. And, and it was a pleasure um, being on this and I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Mayor, last word. Again, thank you for having us and thank you for doing this. I appreciate 
um, that the Sentinel goes to to do this work for for the voters. Um, you know, I have have worked in the city um, with the residents, doing projects and and getting things done for for quite a few years. Um, I've been mayor for two years. Um, you know, some of the things that that were mentioned, you know, the the water meters. Uh, it it takes a little planning to switch out every single water meter in the city. And so it took a couple of years to go through that planning and, and line up the financing. Uh, that's not why water bills were raised. Water bills were raised for the actual cost of treating the water and, and the sewage. I don't know um, if you noticed the cost of chemicals and, and, and employees and, and trucks and fuel, all of that's increasing. And so um, that's, that's an annual increase actually that we, we look at the CPI and how, how water bills have to keep up so that we can maintain a good water plant and uh, sewer treatment center. Um, I was actually at the mall uh, this last week meeting with the owner of the mall and meeting with a couple of tenants and actually um, spoke with the air conditioning crew for about 30 minutes talking to them about, um, you know, how are we going to get this fixed and what's it going to take? And, and the city would really like to have this done. Uh, there are um, some exciting plans for the mall, um, including housing, some more entertainment venues, uh, so we are working on those things. Um, we are um, working on a master plan and a redevelopment of the Sanford Marina, which nothing has been done with for 50 years. And we're, we're going to turn that into uh, a world-class center that will actually raise money for the city. It will, um, you know, instead of getting our $20,000, $25,000 a year, we'll be getting several hundred thousand dollars a year in income from that. Um, we're, you know, we've redone the golf course. We're bringing in a, a new country club there. Uh, and so, you know, we do have a lot of things going on. It takes time to get to get things done in the city. That's unfortunate that it, it takes time, but that's the way government works. Uh, the airport, you know, has um, a lot of things going on. They now have a plan for development on both sides. They've got a an exciting development that I hope is going to be announced soon. Um, you know, we we have an agreement to put a fire station out there and we will probably be moving that fire station actually to a better location because of a development that's coming in. We have a couple of major corporations that are, that are looking at space out there. Um, so so we are developing those kinds of things. Uh, it just takes, uh, takes time to see things happen. And I would like the next four years, there are some things I wanna make sure happen like the water meters, like the stormwater project in Georgetown, which has been on the books for 20 years, but it, because of the cost and because of other projects, we knew it was going to be this late, this much time before we got to it. So I wanna see those come to fruition. I'm good at working with people. I'm good, in, good at um, bringing people together to talk about issues and come up with the best ideas on how to solve problems. And I just like the opportunity to do that for four more years, so thank you. Thank you both so much. This has been a, a wonderful time. I uh, really appreciate you both taking the time to meet with us, especially in the evening, which is always a little difficult. But um, I wish you both the best of luck. I think it's pretty clear that, that the uh, no matter who they elect, the, uh, the residents of Sanford will be winners. I really appreciate you taking the time.